You know what I hate? Technology. I hate technology. It beats me every single time. Every single time it defeats me. Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda. And uh, if you could tell from my intro, I had a technical issue. I have my hair up. I wasn't planning to do another video today, but uh, the video I did of this before has gone poof. I don't know where it is. It's not on my phone. It's not on my recently deleted. It's not in my Dropbox. It's nowhere. So I have to redo this video. And it's, buckle up guys, because it's a big one. <laughs> this is my August book haul revisit. So, so far this is only for one year. So this is just for 2023, which is good because it's a long one. Um, this was before I adopted mindful book buying, but let's get through it. So as usual, I go I will go through each book in the order that they came into my library, or at least the order they are on the spreadsheet. <laughs> I'll tell you where I got it, why I got it, if I read it or unhauled it, if it's still there. Going forward, any book that I've read or unhauled, I'm gonna take off. So when I do this again next year, I will only reflect back on the books that this time were unread, if that makes any sense. But let's get to it. The first book that I got was, um, I got this as an audiobook from Libro FM, and this is Better Living Through Birding by Christian Cup Cooper. Christian Cooper. Um, if you don't know who Christian Cooper is, he is a bird watcher. Um, he has many things, actually. He is a bird watcher. He's a cartoonist, a cartoon artist. He's a lot of things. Um, he recently had a show on the National Geographic Network about birding, which was really good. I watched I watched some of it. I still have some more episodes to go. And National Geographic has chosen to go in a different direction. So it's not there and I can't do any more episodes, which is too bad. But um, unfortunately, what he kind of came to fame for, um, despite all these amazing things that he is, what he came, uh, came to fame for was one day he, during the pandemic, he was bird watching in Central Park, which apparently is a great place to go bird watching. Who knew? And um, he was in a part of the park where dogs had to be on leash. And some woman let her dog just go in. And he asked her to please put the dog on leash. And then she said he was attacking her. He's African American. I should have put that out there too, because this is part of the important part of the story. And she called and said that, you know, she called the police on him for bird watching. We all know that story. That's Christian Cooper, but it is such a teensy weensy part of his story. Um, and this is his whole life. And he does address that incident, but he gives it the credence that it's due as compared to everything else in his life. I really enjoyed this audiobook. I think it was an A plus for me. Highly recommend it. I am not a bird watcher, but now I'm kind of interested in it because he made it so interesting and he is just a super interesting guy. So I highly recommend Better Living Through Birding. The next book I got was from a little free library, and that's Hate, Friendship, Hate Ship, Friendship, Courtship, Love Ship, Marriage Stories by Alice Munro. I did read it, and I did unhaul it, and that's all we're going to say about that. Next, <laughs> I have my book of the month book, which was The Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. Now, I had previously read... Um, the Hacienda, her first book. I really enjoyed it. Um, I had read it shortly after reading Mexican Gothic, which probably isn't fair to compare those two, but I actually preferred the Hacienda to Mexican Gothic. Um, so I was really looking forward to The Vampires of El Norte, but unfortunately this book did not work as well for me. Uh, I was under the impression, thanks to the marketing and what people told me, people in publishing told me, <laughs> it was a horror novel with romance elements. However, People who actually read the book here on Booktube and elsewhere told me beforehand, so I did know this going into it. It was actually a romance novel with horror elements. So that was a little, didn't sit, didn't, if that just there didn't work as well for me. Um, I did feel as far as a story construct, it wasn't as constructed as well as I would have liked. But the biggest thing, and maybe this is me just being stubborn with my beliefs, but when you say vampire, I'm expecting something. You know, you know what I mean? I'm expecting like a human-ish monster that sucks blood. That's what I'm expecting and that you can't be seen in the daylight and all this. The vampires in this book are not that. They're something, they're just monsters. And I get maybe the monsters of El Norte doesn't roll off the tongue as well, but I felt like it was a little bit of a bait and switch with that one. So I think I gave it three star or a B. I'm still going to read Isabel Cañas. I think she's a great writer. I just, this one just didn't work for me. 
And then next we're going to get into a number of books that um, I have not yet read. So let me get started with this. The first is The Chosen by Elizabeth Lowry. I believe, I believe this book is about Thomas Hardy's wife. Um, I saw it on Katie at Books and Things channel when she's talking about the Walter Scott Prize for last year. And so I got it from Blackwell's. I still haven't read it. I have every intention of reading it. It sounds really interesting, but I have a lot of books and uh, so much time. So, <laughs> And the next book um, that I also purchased from Blackwell's, I think because I could get it in paperback, was Trust by Hernan Diaz. Um, again, I have every intention of reading this. This was the co-winner for the Pulitzer Prize. I have every intention of reading it. I just haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> Um, and then I had a book that I got from the library bookstore, and that is Here on Earth by Alice Hoffman. And I've talked about Alice Hoffman. I really enjoy her books, but she has a very large backlist that I'm still working through. And this particular book was probably her best known after Practical Magic and the Practical Magic books because it was one of the first Oprah books. Um, it is also, and this is what really appeals to me is making me really interested in it, um, it is a retelling of Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. However, I am super interested in it, but I'm not going to read. I am going to read this book, but I'm going to read it next March. Stay tuned. We'll talk more about that later. <laughs> okay. And then I have two books because last year I felt like I wanted to be one of the popular kids and I wanted to read the Booker Long List. Um, so I ordered some books from the Booker Long List. I actually only read one book off the Booker Long List last year, which I got ironically from the library. Um, and I did not like it. Um, that was uh, the one about squash. Whatever that one's called. I totally forgot the name of the book now. Anyway, that's not the book I'm talking about. I did order copies of, well, the first one was Study for Obedience by Sarah Bernstein. So there's actually, I think, three books on here, but the first two, Study for Obedience by Sarah Bernstein. So this one I think has won a, one of the Canadian awards, maybe the, did it win Carol Shields or something like that? I know it won some other award and I am interested in it. I just don't, I just don't feel a real, I, I think I'm going to need something that kind of gets me going to read it. I have heard mixed things about it as well, which kind of like, eh, it's not, it's not high priority for me, but I'm still going to keep it on my shelves. The next one is How to Build a Boat by Elaine Feeney. Uh, this is one of the Irish books off that list. And um, same sort of thing. I've heard mixed things about it, which makes me not as eager to read it, but I still generally want to read it. And I do think it's going to have to, something's going to have to happen to really get me to read it. That makes any sense. I did learn this year. I didn't get any of, I mean, I've already read one of the book along. I read James and I have Wandering Stars. So that's all I'm doing for the Booker Long List this year. <laughs> um, I learned my lesson. So uh, yeah, those were the first two that I got because I wanted to be one of the cool kids. The next book I have is one that I had pre-ordered. Um, it came really highly recommended by Louise Erdrich and I ordered it through Birchbark. Um, the next several books are going to that I'm going to talk about come from this order I made at Birchbark. Um, and then after I got it, I found out that it is it, the, the author, um, the agent, the author's agent is my friend's nephew's wife. I've talked about that in other videos, that whole connection. But this was a council of dolls. This ended up being a five star book for me. It's it talks about generational trauma from the residential school program, but they do it. She does it in a very interesting way. There's definitely elements of I guess you could call it magical realism. There's magic, at least of some sort in there. It is not a book for someone who has a doll phobia. I'm just going to put that one out there right now. Because if you have a doll phobia, you don't want to read this book. But if you don't, you'll be fine. It's a great book. So the next one, whenever I, well, the next one I got was Cherokee Rose by Tia Miles. So Tia Miles is, was nominated. She might have been, I don't know if she was shortlisted. She was longlisted for the inaugural um, Women's Prize for Nonfiction this year, but not for this book. Um, I think it was All That She Carried, I think was the one that she was nominated for. This one is a novel and it's called The Cherokee Rose. Again, I, I am interested in reading it. I just have to do it. <laughs> and then whenever I place an order at Birch Park, I always have to get some Louise Erdrich books. 
like Alice Hoffman. She's an author I really love, but I, she has a huge backlist that I am still working through. Um, so I have three books there that um, I've not yet read, but I'm going to because I, I am definitely interested in doing it. Um, the first one, um, the first one I actually am going to read in September, and that is Books and Islands of Ojibwe, Camp, Ojibwe Country. Um, which is a little nonfiction kind of travel log thing. I mentioned it in my September TBR slash pile of possibilities video. So there's that one. And then I have La Rose, which I've heard fantastic things from about fantastic things about. <laughs> um, and then um, after that, I have the Beat Queen, which is another one I've heard fantastic things about. The only book of hers that I have heard people say they don't like is my favorite of hers, which is the sentence. So I don't think I can go wrong with Louise Erdrich. Now, um, Kim at Kim's Book of Life and I were thinking of trying to do maybe in October, but I, she doesn't know this as the time of me filming this. I'm thinking maybe we'll just do it in November because November is Indigenous Peoples Month, <laughs> uh, doing a Louise Erdrich book and it, uh, Buddy Reed and whoever else would like to join us. It may be one of those. Um, I'm going to make a little video at some point in the future of the books that I have and maybe we'll decide from there which one we're going to do. But those two of them, La Rose and The Bee Queen, are both in the running for that. Then I have another pre-order. Um, and this is a book that, oh man, I always feel like this one needs an explanation. This is The Invisible Hour by Alice Hoffman. It was her new release last year. So on the one hand, I loved this book. I loved this book. This book was written for me. <laughs> for me. However, People hear me gush about it and they're like, oh, Melinda and Web of Stories love this book. And I'm like, Ugh, I don't know if you should start with that one. Because <laughs> I understand why people don't like this book. Because it's Nathaniel Hawthorne fanfic. It's what it is. Um, so for those of you who picked it up, especially if you picked it up on my recommendation, I hope you enjoy it. But if you don't, it's a fluky book. Alice Hoffman has a lot of other books you can read. <laughs> don't give up on Alice Hoffman based on The Invisible Hour. That's my my take on that one. <laughs> and then after that, and I had to order this from, I think, University of Nebraska Press or something like that, is Freeland by Rose Wilder Lane. So this is one of the books where she like stole from her mother's life and like made a profit off it and they got in a big fight and it's a whole, it's a whole thing. Um, the first one was Let the Hurricane Roar, I think, um, which I read last year. It's on the banks of Plum Creek is, is what it is. It's on the banks of Plum Creek for adults. That's exactly what that book is. <laughs> um, so Freeland is very much like that. It's it's Little House on the Prairie just repackaged. Is now I don't know if it's Little House on the Prairie, the book, but I'm talking about Little House on the Prairie, the, kind of the, the world, Little House on the Prairie, repackaged. Um, so I'm interested to read it. Rose Wilder Lane was a character. Um, she's not a character I have a lot of respect for. Um, I think she did her mother dirty a lot. Um, she also was uh, considered one of the founding mothers of American libertarianism, another thing that I don't have a lot of respect for. <laughs> and my friend Karen read this book and she told me it was the most racist thing she'd ever read. So I have that going for it too, but I am curious. So we're going to see. I, I mean, this is definitely a book I'm going in with like, okay, lay it on. Let's see what you got, Lane. <laughs> so when I get to it, I'll let you know. And I'll let you know if I have actually read anything that's more racist than that. So then I have another book from uh, Libro. I'm pretty sure I pre-ordered this. Um, and it is a book that everybody read last year. Or they're reading it now for the Book 2 Prize because it's still in the running for the Book 2 Prize. And that is Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. Loved it. Narrated by Meryl Streep. I don't know what else I can say about it. It's a fantastic book. Um, it's a pandemic book in that the pandem pandemic provides a setting for it, but it's not really about the pandemic. So if you're someone who still doesn't really want to read about the pandemic, I wouldn't worry about it in this case. Um, I highly recommend the audio, but I know audio doesn't work for anyone. I'm sure it's fabulous on print too. It's just Meryl Streep narrates it. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, highly recommend Tom Lake. And then I have another... Western Lane, that was the name of the book to, uh, the Booker Prize that I did read and I found boring. Western Lane, okay. Back to that because now I have another Booker Prize that I still have not read. Um, and this is Pearl by Sean Hughes or however you pronounce her name, sorry. Now I, I purchased a print copy of this. I do know that Jennifer at Jennifer Loves Books listened to the audio, I believe, and really enjoyed it. So we'll see. 
But like the other two, it's like it's on my shelf and I'm interested, but I just, you know, trying to get that, that oomph is just not there to read it at the moment. So we'll see. Um, my husband is upstairs yakking so everybody can hear it. So you're all going to hear my husband's phone conversation as he comes down the door. Oh no, he's just talking to my daughter. You all get to hear it. As I said, high level of oblivion. Okay. After that, um, I have a short story collection called Life Ceremonies by Sayaka Murata. And this is the book that convinced me that Sayaka Murata is far too weird for me. Um, I had read Convenience Store Woman, uh, which I liked. I liked Convenience Store Woman. It's a fun little audiobook, especially, and it was great. So I said, oh, I like short stories and I liked Convenience Store Woman. And this is on the remainder shelf at Powell's. So let's get it. Um, I did know going into it, because I could kind of tell from the cover that there was going to be cannibalism. Oddly enough, the cannibalism was not the hardest part of that book. And just the fact that I had to say that should tell you a lot. She's too weird for me. That's it. No more Sayaka Murad. <laughs> just like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No. Um, I am glad that I listened to Convenience Store Woman before I read this. Because had I read this, I would never have listened to Convenience Store Woman. Never. <laughs> I do think Convenience Store Woman is fine. People are not going to have an issue with it, but I think that you anything other than that by Sayaka Murata, you probably are. So there. And then I have a couple other books that I got off the remainder shelf at Powell's but have not read yet. The first one is Miss Iceland by... Um, look down below for the author. I'm not even going to try. I, I will slaughter it if I try. Um, so this book... At shortly after I bought it, Marcella, Marcella and her books did a little vlog of like a, a vacation she took on, uh, in Europe. Well, she, she's in Europe, so other parts of Europe. And in one of the B&B &B or the Airbnb she stayed in, they had a copy of this book and she read it and enjoyed it, which was good because it was a complete impulse buy on my part. And um, so, yeah, it's still on my shelf. Interested in reading it, but there you go. It's definitely more of an oomph behind it than anything for the book of prize, but there you go. And then the other book I got off the remainder shelf was The Good Lord Bird by James McBride, which everyone says is absolutely fantastic and I have not read it. The only James McBride book I have read is The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store, which I liked. I didn't love it as much as some people did, but I liked it. I thought it was really good. I think I gave it an A+. Plus. Um, there you go. So... Um, I will get to that one when I get to that one, <laughs> like everything else. So the next chunk of books, which is actually the last chunk of books in this, all came from this order I made at bookshop.org where on their end, they messed up and they sent me three copies of everything, except for one book they sent me four copies of. So my daughter and I did a little tour of little free libraries to jump up, to drop off all these copies. Bookshop.org is fantastic about their customer service is fantastic about it. And they said, just, just distribute them. Um, uh, apparently my children are going to mop something. <laughs> That's happening over there. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, but anyway, let's get to these books. So the first one is a short story collection. I'm trying this one. The first one is a short story collection, the witness for the prosecution and other stories by Agatha Christie. I have read this one was great. I think I only had to read like a handful of stories out of it because I had already read a number of them. But great short story collection. Um, the reason I made a point of specifying it was that book is because I also got the play, The Witness for the Prosecution. So it, the, it, that's a play version of a short story that's included in the other one. I've yet to read that. It's fine. I'll get to it. Um, I also got The Mousetrap, which is based on um, Three Blind Mice, I believe which I had previously read. It was in Midwinter Murders, that collection. Um, but I have that play as well. I've not seen the play, but I have the play. So I could like put my children to work and have them entertain me or something like that. I don't know. Um, so I have those two. And then I got um, a book that I will be reading next March, kind of with Here on Earth. <laughs> it's called Half-Life of a Stolen Sister by Rachel Cantor. It is about the Brontes. So again, stay tuned. At some point in the future, you will hear more about that. Um, and then I have two memoirs. These are the last two books, I promise. Two memoirs that uh, the first one was Dancing into the Light, an Arab-American Girlhood in the Middle East by Catherine K. Abdul-Baki. If I remember correctly, this is about a, a 
woman as a she was born in the United States. Her early childhood was in the United States, and then she moved to the Middle East. So it's kind of like that culture change there sounded very interesting. And then I have the Rooster House, my Ukrainian family story by Victoria Bellum. I am not sure if this is about a Ukrainian fa Ukrainian American family or a Ukrainian family in Ukraine. Either way, sounds very interesting to me. Just need to get to it. <laughs> so those are my books. Um, I had at one point all this all counted and now I can't find that list. So I'm gonna have to count here for you. I had, I had 26 books and uh, I read eight of them. <laughs> so yes, yeah, uh, I, I read not many. I need to read a lot more of those. Um, but yeah, as I said, I, I already have a plan to read three of them, two next March and one next month. So it's gonna happen. Whether those Booker Prize ones ever happen, that's another, that's another question. And I did learn my lesson. I did not buy any Booker Prize books this year. So there you go. Anyway, that is my book haul revisit for August, 2023. As I said, next year when I come to do this, I'll only be revisiting the books that I didn't read or unhaul already. So anything that I said that I've read, I didn't have any unhauls on this one. I had one unhaul, but I had read it and then unhauled. So anything that I've read, I'm going to hide those. They aren't on the list anymore and we'll just keep on going. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe, join my discord. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.